In this example, we're going to look at a vending machine that has the amount of drink dispensed as a normal random variable with a mean of a 100 and standard deviation of 7.5. So what I'm going to do is consider, I know x will say has is a normal curve with a mean 100 and 7.5 squared. What's the probability that a randomly chosen machine dispenses at least 102 uh, centimeters cubed? Well, that's simply saying what's the probability that x is bigger than or equal to 102? Well, if I think about my normal curve, this is one, one particular dispenser. I know it should be 100, and here's 102. I'm looking for this area here. So that is normal distribution, so I'm going to go to second normal, number two. My lower is 102. My upper is big. This is 100. And I'm going to make sure I put in the standard deviation and not the variance. And I find out the probability of that happening is 0 0.394. This is one machine one single probability. This is A part. Now B part, what's the fine? It's probably the average amount dispensed of a randomly, randomly chosen sample of 36 is at least 102. Well, that means I'm going to go the first machine, and I'm going to look at the second machine, and the third machine, and all these machines, all 36 of them. And if I want to find the expected sum of all those, well, I know then that each of these is going to be 100, and so my expected sum, now if I call this equal to t for the total, total will be normal with a sum of 3600, 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 36 times. The variance is going to be, well it's going to be the variance plus the variance plus the variance plus the variance is going to be 36 variances times uh, 7.5 squared. And this is going to be t, the total. If the average is going to be 102, well I'm going to look for then the probability that t is bigger than or equal to 102, 102 times 36 is 3672. If I put this into my calculator with these values, I will get 0 0.0548, which is considerably smaller than 39%. Because this is saying the average is going to be, of all of these machines, is going to be more than 102. Now, this is using expectation algebra from previous. But if I have a sample of 36, I can also use a second way is I can use the central limit theorem. And this is key. I'm going to look at the average of these x's. I know it should also be, if this expectation of 1, the average should also be the same. The variance, well, if I look at my formula that I did before, the variance is going to be sigma squared divided by n. Sigma squared, so 7.5 squared divided by n, and n is 36. And so this is going to be my standard deviation. And so now I'm going to find the probability that the x bars are bigger than or equal to 102. When I go to my distributions, normal distribution, it's 102. My upper is still big, but my mean is the same, but it's my variance that's going to be different. It's going to be our standard 7.5 divided by 6. And when I do that, I clearly see I get the same probability of 5.48%. And so there's two ways to do it. The central limit theorem by utilizing the power of 
the fact that we know the standard deviation, uh, and so we can do it both ways.